Well, Razorback fans, it's officially here. The Liberty Bowl is upon us and why Arkansas has to win this game. We'll talk about that as well as Razorback basketball getting set for conference play on the road against LSU and also KJ Jefferson, the best SEC returning quarterback next year. It's all coming up on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas weekend. As we know, it's staying busy around this time of year. And hopefully for all of you that are traveling, if you're doing so with uh, your luggage still intact and able to get to the destination spot that you're trying to get to. But it's been wild just to see how all of it has gone down just over the past few days but uh, it's great to have some time off great to be with some friends and loved ones and hanging out and uh it's great to be able to come back with the podcast too i'm recording this later in the afternoon actually after my radio show so that's why the lighting looks a little bit different too because i actually have my other light on it just looked weird and i feel like i look weird right now but i don't care who cares about physical appearance it doesn't matter but uh i had some things come up and i'm going to try to make the trip up to memphis for the uh liberty bowl tomorrow and uh look at the arkansas and kansas in that game and Hopefully it goes well for Arkansas, and hopefully it doesn't end up being a complete and total disaster for them as well. And, and that's kind of where I wanted to take the podcast or at least start off with it today and talking about the bowl game itself because Arkansas has been a, has been a team that's been favored in this game. It has moved along, according to Bet Online, over to minus 2.5. The Razorbacks are still favored. I think they opened up as a 4.5 four point favorite, so you are feeling really good about uh, Kansas and, and betting on them. And uh, we know that Arkansas is also without a crap ton of players that have entered into the transfer portal. I think I saw and read from Hog Sports that somewhere around 37 players that are going to be making the trip for Arkansas that are walk-ons or, or fresh faces or whatever it may be. So there's just a lot of questions going on with this game in particular and what people can think out of Arkansas and whether or not they're going to take care of business and beat Kansas. So... Uh, I'm going to be very honest and frank about this, where you, if you've read, if you see the title and you've read the title and you, you probably listened to the my radio show today, and I'm going to kind of continue on with discussing the same thing that I have been discussing and beating the drum of it all, which a lot of you probably don't agree with or maybe don't even care as much. But I I don't like the must win type of phrase. I think it's a little overused. And in some cases, over dramatic, but I try to use it in cases to where I truly believe it needs to be a must win for obvious reasons. And that's how I'm viewing this Liberty Bowl that the Razorbacks are playing in. It. Arkansas has to win this game against Kansas. Uh, there's a massive difference between seven and six and six and seven. It's the difference between saying you had a winning season or a losing season. You are playing against a team that has not been relevant in any form or fashion in football in over a decade. They had a season where this is, might be their best season that a lot of these people have seen in quite some time, and they finished six and six. They lost five of their or six of their last seven games on the schedule. They give up 34 points per game defensively, and they barely scraped by and just did enough to make it into a bowl game. Now, I'm not saying all of that to try to trash Kansas in any regard or anything like that. I am saying it because it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the fact. It's it's the obvious matter. And Arkansas is a team that, on paper, even with all the transfers that have left, even with some of the players that were a part of this team and played a huge role on them, even though that they've gone into the portal or went to the NFL or whatever it may be, all of that known and all of that said, Arkansas is still a better team. In fact, I would even make the argument that if you, when this, when these two teams face each other uh, in Memphis tomorrow, if you just look on the field, Arkansas for sure has at least the top two players on the field, maybe even top three, maybe even top four, maybe even top five. Like they have, I think KJ Jefferson and Rocket Sanders are the top two, no questions asked. They're better than any player that Kansas has. I think that I could hear arguments for other players too into the mix as far as how good they are, you know, if you want to throw in a Jordan Dominic or uh, if you want to throw in uh, somebody like uh, Matt Landers, for sure. I think Matt Landers, for sure, is the best wide receiver out there. But overall, Arkansas is still, with all the players that have been out, a better team. 
And then the last thing that you want to do is repeat a feeling that the Razorback fans had after 2016, where you felt like you had a lot of good things going. You felt like maybe you're going the right direction. You felt like you had a really good season. And then you lose to Missouri at the end of the year. And then you lose in the bowl game. And then suddenly that year that you felt like should have been so much better, where you ended up uh, going seven and six, you look back on it and said that should have been a nine win year. But it wasn't, it was the reality. But the whole time from spring ball to summer workouts in the fall camp, nobody felt good about the Razorback football team. No one felt confident about him. Everyone was jumping off ship of Brett Bielema. And the 2017 season ended up being pretty bad at four and eight with one and seven in conference play. Now, is it the exact same circumstance for Sam Pittman and for Arkansas this year and where they would go into next year? No, it's not the exact same. But it does give a little bit of a feeling that if they end up going six and seven and the final lasting impressions you had of this team was losing on the road on the road to an inferior Missouri team and then losing to Kansas, who is a program that has not been relevant in any way, shape or form. And you have so much more talent than them. That's going to be really hard to convince people to be excited about not only next season, but the future of Razorback football. I think you've done some really good things in recruiting. I think you still have time to do some really good things in the portal. Looks like there's going to be adding some guys into the portal, just kind of a wait and see approach of when that actually happens. Uh, you have some pieces coming back next year. You've made some hires in the coaching staff that there's reasons to be excited about it too. Like all of that's great, grand, and wonderful. But you need some reason and you need to give some reason for Razorback fans to feel good, to feel like a – this type of year is not going to happen again. The type of losses that they had this year are not going to happen again. You want to see that they care, that they're passionate. They still believe that there is still some great things to happen and uh, the great things and great reasons to believe that uh, this is all going to get better next year and you'll have a better season. You need reasons and give fans reasons to believe in that. It's not to say that if you like this bowl game hinges on the future of Razorback football. I think that's a little extreme. But it just hinges on the, the confidence and, and the feelings that Razorback fans will have. And I think that's important. That's important to have. That's important to be able to make that work and make people believe that you're going in the right direction. And so I believe Arkansas is going to win. I believe that Arkansas should be able to win simply on based on the fact that you have K.J. Jefferson and Rocket Sanders and Matt Landers. I think those three guys offensively, you're going to score plenty of points on Kansas because especially since they can't stop the run. I think that defensively, yeah, you're missing some pieces, especially your two best linebackers, but uh, you have enough there to at least keep Kansas from scoring 50-plus points. And that's honestly the only way I could see Kansas really winning this game, assuming that Arkansas's offense brings it. Like, I just don't see Arkansas's offense not having success. So you just need that. You need to have everyone have that good taste in their mouth heading in to the next step and say, hey, listen, yeah, we we had that Missouri loss, that AM loss were bad. You know, that those bad losses on the schedule, we had them. It sucked. But this is a this is a new feeling. This is a new rejuvenation to where a lot of those issues got weeded out, all those problems ended up leaving. And now we can actually get focused in, get get to studying, get to getting ready, get everything back on track in the way that it's supposed to be, and feel good about a schedule next year, which is much easier for Arkansas than what it would be this past season. So we'll talk about some specifics as far as college and, and, and the players that are going to be there for Arkansas, but it comes down to this. You got to win. You got to win. If you don't win, everyone's going to be upset and rightfully so I'll be upset and rightfully so seven and six is a very different from six and seven. And as long as you go to seven and six, people can at least feel better. But if you go seven and if you go six and seven, it's going to be hard to really get people excited about the good feelings that they may have for next year. It's as simple as that. These days, every new potential hire feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. So you want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. So what you do is you just go on to LinkedIn Jobs uh, or LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. And when you go there, you can be able to use all the different tools that they have to be able to promote that you're hiring at your business like screening questions, make it easy to focus on candidates with the right skills and experience that help you quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and when you'd like to interview. That's why small businesses rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires 
versus their leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs also help you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, not only do you have Razorback football, but you also have Razorback basketball being in a uh, particular position where they start conference play on the road against LSU. The game's going to be at 8 p.m. on Wednesday night. So a lot of you, after getting done watching Arkansas in the Liberty Bowl, you'll be able to watch Arkansas against LSU. Now, this is an interesting one because we know Nick Smith is not going to be good enough to play. We know that LSU is sitting at 11-1 and this year. Uh, it seems like they've always been a team that does well in non-conference play. But uh, they have their own set of issues. They're a decent team, but uh, not a team that's better than Arkansas, not a team that's really on the radar for a whole lot of people as far as you know competing in the SEC at this point in time. So they're going to really want it. Arkansas is number nine in the country. They just got moved up to a spot in the latest AP poll. Uh, they have been playing really well, even without Nick Smith. The past few games, I feel like Arkansas has played some of their best basketball and being extremely dominant. And uh, with uh, with LSU as good or as maybe better than what they were last year, they still don't have the Jimmys and Joes to be able to hang with Arkansas in this game, at least on paper. But it's always weird whenever you go on the road, start conference play, and especially in a place like LSU, and especially when you are a team that's a top 10 team, you know that they're going to make sure that they give you their best effort. You have a target on your back, and they're going to want to go out there and really get after it and really make sure that they make it tough on you. So. Arkansas actually owns a series against LSU 41 to 34, but they are 13 and 19 in Baton Rouge. And it's just still funny to me last year, Arkansas, if you remember correctly, Arkansas beat LSU three times last year. And one of them was on the road. And the one that really got their season turned around is actually when Muss was out and Keith Smart was the one coaching. And they ended up uh, starting and winning that game on the road against a very qu high quality opponent and one that uh, was ranked at the time in LSU. And then they just really got it going on after that. So, uh, but yeah, Arkansas and, and versus LSU, Arkansas beats them in pretty much every statistical category. Arkansas is far and away a better offensive team, far and away. Uh, field goal percentage, Arkansas and LSU are pretty close to it, but Arkansas holds the edge about a percentage point. Arkansas, or they don't turn the ball over near as much as LSU. Uh, LSU does not shoot at as well at all. I mean, they are a little bit better at three point percentage, but uh, Arkansas still. Uh, it, it, when it comes to in the lane and shooting twos, they're one of the best teams in the country. So that's not the case. Arkansas is much better at free throw percentage. And when it comes to tempo teams, Arkansas is far, far, far and away better than what uh, LSU is. Also defensively, and that's mainly offensively, but defensively, Arkansas is number nine in the country in defense and as far as defensive efficiency. So, yeah, they're much better than LSU is, uh, especially at the fact of uh, they hold teams to lower free throw or field goal percentage. Turnover percentage, Arkansas is a top 10 team in the country in their turnover, so they're, they're going to cause some problems there for them. Also, uh, they're two, Arkansas does not allow a whole lot of points in the paint. And in fact, uh, they're 94th in the country, but even three-point defense is 33rd, where on the other side of it, LSU is, is 205th in the country at two-point defense. They're pretty good at holding teams to a three, but uh, you feel like Arkansas should still be in a better position there. Arkansas is better in blocking. They're 34th in blocking compared to 155. There uh, with LSU. Steel percentage, Arkansas is number eight in the country compared to LSU with 166th. And then defensive rebounding, number 25 in percentage-wise compared to LSU's 124. So just overall, the, the, the numbers speak for themselves. Arkansas is a much better team across the board, offensively, defensively, even without Nick Smith, even without Trevin Brazil, Arkansas is a better team. The, now the team that the player that everyone's going to have to watch for if you're Arkansas is, is going to be K.J. Williams. He averages nearly 20 points a game. And then Adam Miller pour, pours in about 13 and a half points per game. But besides that, you got Justice Hill, former kid from Arkansas, who has eight points a game, Ken Hayes, eight points a game, and then Derek Fountain, seven points a game. They have no bench. Their bench play is pretty much non-existent. Uh, they, they have a couple guys that uh, could play a little bit or at least give a couple points here and there, but it really comes down to their starters. And then Arkansas, you know, across the board, we know what their starters are going to look like. You're going to have Black, Devo Davis, uh, Council, Walsh, uh, Mitchell there at starting. Jalen Graham, Kamani Johnson coming off the bench there too. Maybe pouring in some some points there. But I think uh, I think Arkansas will take care of business. Because honestly, as long as you just stop K.J. Williams, who's 6'10", 250, he's a big old dude. 
But if you stop him in the paint, Arkansas is going to win this game. Uh, they, they, Arkansas is just so good defensively, and we know how well defense travels for Arkansas. Uh, we know how they're getting better and better, especially at guarding the perimeter. The only way I see LSU really being able to win this game is if they do really a good job from three-point land. Like if they start hitting threes in Arkansas's eyes, that could be problematic. And if Arkansas starts turning the ball over too, if they start being sloppy and being careless and reckless, then that could be a problem too. But Arkansas should win this game. But we know in SEC play, and especially to start the conference season, no matter what, especially with Arkansas, it doesn't always uh, go according to plan, doesn't always go well. But even like I compared it to the past couple of years, Heading into conference play, though, you still saw some of the weaknesses. Like, you saw the writing on the wall. Like, last year's team was not very good defensively at that point in time. They lost a few games before getting into conference play. And so, it kind of just happened that way. And same thing with the year before. But this year, this is a new team. And Arkansas right now is playing their best basketball of the season. Like, I hope and pray that they're playing, they are able to play more and take it up another step. But right now, they're playing their best basketball. So, I think Arkansas wins. I think Arkansas starts 1-0. and and it'd be nice to really have that start, too, because then you have Missouri at home. Missouri's better than what they were last year, but you get them at home. And you go on the road, the Auburn Tigers, which Auburn is not as good of a team as what they were last year, but they are pretty good. And then you get Alabama at home, which is going to be hopefully a top 10 matchup in Bud Walton Arena. So, you know, plenty of work to do, but LSU and Arkansas in that game, I think Arkansas is definitely the better team, and they should take care of business there as well. Folks, you're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks, and a few drinks become a few too many. And as the evening comes to an end, people start to head out. You think about calling them for a ride, and you're like, no, I live nearby. It's no problem. I can make it home. No big deal. What are the odds you get pulled over anyway? Let's be let's be clear about it. I mean, even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car. Maybe even kill somebody. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk, but the results are tragic and often deadly. However, that doesn't stop everybody from getting behind the wheel under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on the road to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, I saw a tweet from Connor O'Gara, which uh, Saturday Down South does a really good job of uh, covering all things SEC football. And he put out a tweet that I thought was pretty fascinating. He also got a lot of people, uh, I wouldn't say upset, but definitely disagreeing and, and looking at it. And he came out with his way too early top tier SEC quarterback rankings. He had Will Rogers at number four, which it's stupid for me to believe that he's still in the SEC. I feel like he's been there at Mississippi State forever, but he has him at number four. He has Jaden Daniels, the LSU quarterback at number three. Devin Leary is a quarterback that has officially transferred into the SEC, which a lot of people may not know much about him, but uh, he's a really good quarterback. And now he's going to be at, uh, at uh, Kentucky. So he, he's, Somebody that could really change their entire season and everything, but he was playing for NC State, and so that's a good transfer for him. But the number one quarterback that he has is K.J. Jefferson. K.J. Jefferson. And there were people that have disagreed with this and people that, of course, are like, no, he ain't that good. He's not better. But as I was talking about uh, the other day on the podcast, where people don't realize that K.J. Jefferson literally played two less games this year, played three less games healthy, and still put up better numbers across the board than he did last year with Traylon Burks. Like, that's a fact. Like, he did all those things. And next year, he's still going to have Kendall Browse as his OC. Some of you may not like that, but he's still going to have him. He's going to have Rocket Sanders. He's going to have a, a good offensive line in front of him. We'll see what the wide receiver room looks like. But overall, he's still going to have plenty of weapons to be able to be even better and continue to improve and all those things, too. So I believe K.J. Jefferson is going to be the best quarterback in the SEC preseason. Now, when it actually gets down to it, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, you never know about injuries. You never know about transfer portal because there's still some, it could be somebody out there that ends up coming into the conference. But overall, I think Arkansas is got has got the best quarterback in the SEC heading into next year. How many times have they been able to say that? I mean, seriously. The last time I think we might have been able to say that legitimately was what, maybe Tyler Wilson? And then that 2012 year, or maybe Ryan Mallett? Maybe. But even then, there were still some other guys that were into the mix. But to me, it's not even close. I think Arkansas has the best quarterback in KJ Jefferson heading into the SEC next year. That could be biased. That could be 
uh, something that maybe people like get mad about or disagree or, and there may be some people I've even seen some people at Arkansas fans that think that KJ's not the guy and they want to see something different. I'm like, I, you guys are dumb. Like you can't be saying those things. That's dumb. But I agree with Connor. I really do. And I think that if he has a big year next year, I think he could be finding a way to get himself into the draft. But also if he has a big year next year, that also means that Arkansas is going to have success alongside of it too, but he's got to stay healthy. That's the biggest thing. Get him to stay healthy. And get him to continue to grow and continue to get better. But, uh, you know, we talked about basketball or football and some of the things of why you may not feel as good. Well, one thing you can feel good at is that your quarterback is taken care of. You got you got the best one in the SEC coming back next year. That's a good place to start. That's a good place. To try to start and get things back to normal in that way, too. So appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter, Buzz John Neighbors, for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see.